Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're just going to add a little bit more uh, randomness and uh, a few more attributes to our low polygon wall before moving on to the higher polygon version. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a random tint color to each of the bricks. And that will help us when we come to shading because then we can tint the uh, texture maps with a slight color, giving us a little bit of variation uh, um, in, the, in, the, in the overall look. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put down a color node okay and the plan is in this for each loop here we have kind of halfway got it configured already so all we need to do is add that attribute that's going to pick a color randomly from this color node and the mode that we're going to use on the color node is called ramp from attribute okay and the attribute we provide we'll call it call ramp for color ramp okay and a value of call ramp of zero will give us a black brick and a value of one will give us a white brick and obviously we can pass this parameter on to the end user so they can dial in that tint value as they as they need to so let's just configure the node so we'll say color tint brick and we'll give it that yellow color that we've been using so i'm going to press c on my keyboard and give it that yellow color there all right so let's configure this call ramp attribute now and we can do it in this for each loop here because this for each loop is working on a kind of per brick basis so if i put the display flag here what we want to do is assign that color ramp attribute uh, and give it a random value so we can do that quite simply and we'll just take advantage of this attribute wrangle here the crack ratio one that's currently configured just how we need it so at the bottom we'll initiate a new flow attribute called call ramp and we'll assign that a random value so rand use the detail attribute coming in on input one called iteration index zero and we'll multiply that by any old random number just to give us a unique seed okay cool simple as that so that now has applied that color ramp attribute and if we look in the geometry spreadsheet at primitives we can see we've got a, a value range between zero and one on that color ramp cool so that attribute will be passed through this network and when we get all the way back down to our tint bricks nothing has changed okay well let's have a look why nothing has changed well the first thing is that our color tint brick is operating on points well point attributes well we've just established a primitive attribute up here if we look we're currently working on primitives so we need to change that over so primitives okay and it's still not working and um, it's still not working because we have hard-coded uh, a color information already if you remember up here when we built the noise we added um, where was it we hard-coded uh, a noise value in there so we can just tell it this color node at the bottom here to just ignore or delete any existing color attributes and we get our nice ramped pattern here and like I said you can go ahead and set this to any color that kind of makes sense by default and this will add a, a slight tinting to the uh, to any texture maps that you apply and just sort of further breaking up the, uh, the the look if you're going for that kind of old-fashioned brick wall that's kind of you know might have a little bits of moss you might want to sort of tint these bricks at green and obviously this parameter you can promote to give uh, the end user lots and lots of control over how they want that to look cool so i'm just going to set that back to a mid grade just so it's not too distracting but we can still see the effect all right the next thing we want to do is something we discussed in the last video is just giving our little fracture system just a little bit more control um, over the number of cracks that we get we want to add a little bit more variation so we don't get any noticeable repeating patterns going on um, and the way we're going to do that is with another dead simple wrangle node okay so i'm going to drop down uh wrangle and this one is going to go just before that scatter node because we're going to create another random value okay and because we want this random value to be unique, we need to take advantage of that meta import node. So we'll plug that into the second input of this, of this attribute wrangle. And what we want to do is just 
randomize the number of scattered points we generate in this node. Um, so say something between like, I don't know, three and maybe five or three and seven. And each time it loops through the for each loop, it'll pick a different number from that set. Okay, so we can do that. We'll initialize a new attribute called num scatter points. Okay, and this is going to be equal to a random function using that detail attribute coming in on input one. Index zero. And again, we'll multiply that by any old random number. Okay, we'll end that with a semicolon. Now, there's a couple of things wrong with this statement. This is going to generate a number between zero and one. Okay, and the scatter node needs to work with integers, doesn't it? We can't add 0.1 of a point. Okay, so we need to expand on this expression a little bit. Okay, and we can use the fit or one function. Okay, now the fit or one function again telling you here in the help card, it'll take a range between zero and one and then shifts it to the corresponding value range. Okay, so this is our zero to one range. And at the end here, we want to add the range that we want to fit it into. So I'm going to add, say, between three and six points. Okay, and then close that expression. So now our random number is going into this fit expression and it'll be sort of expanded out to three and six. Okay, still a bit of work to do. This is still giving us a floating point value. So, you know, 3.5 points is not going to work in this scatter. Uh, so we need to cast this function as an integer. And you can see the little green squiggly line under the equal sign here is telling us that an integer and a float, whilst yes, it will potentially work, it's not ideal. So we need to fix this and we can simply cast this as an integer just by placing int in brackets in front of it. And that gets rid of that. So we've got that expression set up there. Now I'll leave that on screen for a, for a second so you can debug it. Um, um, so we've got this attribute. Currently it's a being applied to every single point of the brick. We don't need that. We only need to apply it once uh, on the iteration. So we can set this over to be uh, a detail attribute. Okay, so it'll happen just once per brick. And then in the scatter node, we can read this attribute and use it to drive the total count. Okay. So the way we can do that, we can use the detail function, which is just going to pull uh, a detail attribute off a piece of geometry. You know, we've used it a lot already. The um, surface node that we're interested in is that attribute wrangle that is just above us. So should have given this a proper name. So attrib wrangle two, it's called. Okay. And then the attribute that we're interested in is num scatter points, I think. And the index that we're interested in, well, it's just got one index, so it's index zero. And we'll close that expression. Okay, so we're just pulling that detail attribute off the geometry and using it to drive this total count parameter here. Okay, just let me double check I've got that attribute name correct. Num scatter points. Num scatter points. Yeah, cool. So now what will happen when we get to the bottom of our loop, every time it goes round, it'll generate a random scatter points value. Rand scatter points and then it'll scatter those accordingly. So some bricks will have three, some will have six. So we should hopefully get a variation in the number and the sort of the, the shape of these cracks going on. So let's just come all the way down to the bottom on here. And let's just see if that is making effect. I'm gonna temporarily just crank up that crack ratio so we can see. And there you go, you can sort of see now we're getting we're getting some faces that are just cracked maybe once and then others that have got quite a few cracks. And if you want to, um, you could change these values on the scatter random points. We could go really crazy and put 10 in there. And as you can see, we're starting to get some really heavily damaged 
um, cracked bricks there. I'm going to keep this quite low because uh, I think the effect it looks better if you keep it kind of subtle. So we'll go with six and we'll take that crack ratio down a little bit. All right. Another useful parameter um, it would be useful to have is um, if we don't like the look of this, say we want to try and audition some different looks for this, it'd be nice to have a parameter where we could randomize the seed. Okay, so a, a slider that will just give us a different look. And we can add that in quite easily. So on our crack ratio, when we start generating these random numbers, rather than multiplying it by any old random number, we can be a little bit more specific. So what we can do is we can say a plus, and then we'll give it a new channel called seed all right and we'll press the magic button to bring that to life and here we go we've got seed now and we can start to see that kind of effect taking place there we're getting sort of a random uh, assortment in addition we can start adding links to this seed value so that we've just got one parameter that globally changes uh, all the random parameters that we do so what we'll do is we'll take this scatter node here and we'll just add the word rand seed on there and if we scroll down we've got this global seed value here that changes our kind of look of the bricks which is quite useful if we copy that parameter right click copy parameter come back to our crack ratio and just link it to this seed value here so we can say paste relative reference okay now when we change our global seed we're starting to get a bit more of a a radical change in how that randomness is generated which is quite useful if you know if you if you're not particularly liking the way this is looking you can just tweak the seed and there we go we can add that in again to the rand scatter point here. So instead of multiplying it just by any old random number, we can add a new channel called seed. Okay. Press this magic button to make the channel. And again, we can paste that relative reference from our scatter. So now when we change our global seed on here, we're starting to really mix it up in, in what we're getting so that's kind of useful for uh, procedural systems when you're dealing with randomness just to be to give you the ability to sort of tweak the uh, the seed parameter to get something uh, that you're looking for cool so let's come all the way down to the bottom hope that was useful um please like subscribe all that good stuff in the next video we are going to make a start on the high polygon version of these bricks and start chipping away uh, with a custom uh, edge damage tool that we're going to build so with that, I'll hope to see you in the next video. Thanks.